how to process coffee from A to Z. And the area here is a farmer's market, twice in a week. Yesterday and Wednesday is a farmer's market. We call, it farm, we call it farmer's market because everything that has been produced from the neighborhood will be brought in here and being sold from here. So people from town and far from here will come in with their trucks and buy it from here. So the area after this river, the big plantations, is where most of the white people are living. So they live in mansions and like, like fancy estates? Fancy, yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah. And uh, as you mentioned, we're outside of Arusha, so what is this area called? I mean, I know it's still where, the Arusha where we uh, are, region, right? Where, where we are now, it's Usa River. USA. USA River. U -U USA River. USA. Why? The white people name it that. <laughs> see, the, just in a minute you'll see a sign called Mount Meru Game Lodge, 1959. Established by an uh, animal doctor. His name is Dr. Nagi. And he started a century where he keeps animals, injured animals, and finally becomes a, a kind of a small zoo before they, before they stopped it. There are still some few animals in there, but the government doesn't give a right of putting more new animals. They are slowly phasing out. So the native people here asked him of his origin. It's not changing at The answer was supposed to be I'm from America. And he said I'm from USA. USA is USA. USA, we read it Israeli as USA. And then the people named the river to USA River. Since then, we call it USA River. They, we entering, we have, we are seven kilometers away from Arusha National Park entries. Wow, that, wow, that's so quick. That was quick. <laughs> so we will see if there is any store that is open. We can take water from there. Um, here you'll start seeing the coffee plantations. As I was telling you, that's the Meru tribe. Meru or Wameru is the people living around in this area. This area is evergreen. There's a plenty of water so they can grow see good bananas they can grow coffee they can grow all the fruits that you know except uh, like uh, apple which need a low altitude but other pineapples mango papaya we all grow it here uh, the people here also do a lot of uh, it's not a it's not a big scale but chicken farming because they get a lot of harvest instead of selling it they change it the use of it to be animal feed and then they will sell the product because from eggs you make more money than from selling corn since everyone has got corn in the town like in the city we don't get a lot of chickens, especially free-range chicken that, that can be here and from here we buy and use it. So these people, are, you see the corn? Cage-free chicken, so cage-free chicken, that's what they call them in America. Um, this, this one, these ones here are really free, free-range. Where you open the chicken coop in the morning, they go, they come back to lay eggs, they go out, they come back in the evening to sleep. So you need to be uh, punctual. You need to be punctual because of, uh, I asked the driver to slow down. You need to be punctual to cross the chicken coop in the evening, not other things to go in. You see the trees that are on the same level, green on your uh, right hand side, and even the left hand side, that's Arabica coffee. Those are the Arabica coffee trees. If the, if the plantation is taken good care, the trees looks much better than what you see here. But because you see there's a lot of weeds growing, nobody's replaced the dead ones. You see a lot of porous place, uh, parts. Since um, the owner, the one who is running the farm, he maybe is already old, old person that 
doesn't want to deal with it and the children are not looking after it. But actually the coffee here, as Eugene mentioned to you yesterday, is like 100% organic because mm -hmm. since we have a lot of trees for shade, insects use the trees, higher trees, not the short trees. So why should you spray? But if you make a commercial thing, then you need to spray because you don't, you don't, you need more space for the coffee trees, not more space for the shade, shade trees. You told the orchard trees are for shade, as the coffee needs a lot of shade. Twenty, therefore. So, coffee now, some of them are having small, small white flowers. Tomorrow we'll see better of them. And they will tell us the, the whole story about coffee. Why Arabica? Why is it called Arabica coffee? Arabs. It's because of Arabs. They took it from here to Arab countries for research. Brought it back named Arabica coffee. It's like Lake Victoria, Lake Nyanza. The British went there and they, saw, they named it to the, for, for their prince, princess. Victoria. But there is a name for Lake Victoria. And quickly put it in the books. Yeah, what's the nervous these people? They come and just like name your stuff and then put it in, in the box and tell everybody this is the name of it. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. it's amazing. Sorry? What did you guys call it? I hear lots of before. Serious ego issues, man. This coffee? No. The, the original name, we don't know because the coffee is original from Ethiopia. Ethiopia, yes. Uh, the way that, the, how the Arabs came to be, be in need of knowing what is behind the tree is that we should don't pick the coffee seeds, the coffee beans. It gets dry up on the tree and turns black. And the gods love eating it. When they eat it, they become so energetic. And then somebody says, something should, be, something should be with this tree. And they did the research and they find that it contains a lot of caffeine. Use it for medicine purposes, but also for drinking. Making like chocolates and other things. Today, we drink a lot of coffee, even in our country. And we process our coffee by ourselves. Um, A lot of things are being taken away from our hands because we didn't put a uh, brand, we didn't put a, 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 a like permanent thing on it. But I'm sure these things will slowly come back. And you didn't know how to market it? Yeah. Like in Germany, the museum in Germany is making hell of money. The biggest dinosaur in the Berlin Museum, it was from Tanzania. The biggest dinosaur. <laughs> and a lot of people are going to that uh, museum just to see that huge dinosaur. And what did they say is that we are ready to bring it back to Tanzania, but we are not sure if the Tanzanians are able to handle it. Wow, that is deep. But uh, anyway, they will bring it. Stolen legacy family. You know, the thing is, you can stop everything, but you cannot stop word of mouth. It goes from one person to another, one person to another, and today with the social media, it just flies around. So, the young generation of today, they will know that the dinosaur in the museum in Germany is from Tanzania, while they are so young. I came to know it last year. So they will start talking of it while they are young, and one day they will say, well, we did it, but even if it come to, to, to disintegrate to zero here, it's here. So that's, that's the positive part of life, that one day it will be back. Today in Old Dubai Gorge, where they find the fossil spawns of Homo sapiens, Zygiatropus. We have a huge museum with better information than ever before. Why? Because of the young generation. They say, no, no, this is not what we want. We want to build the 
We want to bring back all the balls that are in Nairobi. We want to bring balls that are in Germany. But small pieces are back here. The big pieces are still there. So one day, the skull of Zinja Tropa will come back. The dinosaur bones will come back. And then they will come from there to here, from there to, here to see it. So that's a positive part. Today we have Serengeti. And guys, you need to see the Serengeti migration one time. The only biggest animal migration that is existing on Earth is in Serengeti. Kenya and Serengeti in Tanzania. Serengeti and, Tan and Serengeti and Masai Mara is like this book. It's one book. They open it, it's two sides. If you're in this side, you're in Tanzania. And if you're in this side, you're in Kenya. What separates us is the Mara River. And that's why we call it my animal migration, because they have to stamp their passports. If you'll be denied, you die in that river. Wow. <laughs> if you make it, you cross to Kenya and come back. Serengeti is 14,763 square kilometers. Masai Mara is 2,000 square kilometers. The animals in number is, they are about uh, 2.6 million animals. Wow. That's the old counting. Today we're talking of plus or minus 3 million animals. Million, million. Oh, yeah in the Serengeti. So if you take the number of 2.6 million animals in 2,000 square kilometers of land, it takes only two, three weeks, those animals will come back to, Masai, to Mara River. And luckily, Mara River is not for Kenya, Mara River is not for Tanzania. Mara River is for us. So animals will hang around there in uh, September, October, and then uh, November they will start coming to central Serengeti. They will go back to their home, Tutu, which is the north, southern place of Serengeti, to give birth. We call it the dropping season. So one of those two, you can come and see it. <laughs> it's a dropping season because you can see the mother, while the baby is moving and the baby is coming out. The baby drops down and stands up seven minutes after birth and runs with his mother. <laughs> Quick question now, what is the purpose and the breakdown of the migration from uh, Tanzania to modern day uh, Kenya? Oh, they follow fresh uh, grass. Oh, gotcha, makes sense. The yeah, rain they follow goes, the food. The rain goes clockwise. The rain starts on the eastern part of Masai Mara, come to eastern part of Tanzania. They come to eastern part of Tanzania. Uh, perfect. The eastern part of Tanzania, Masai, in, 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 in uh, Serengeti, southern, southeast of Gorongoro, then west of uh, southwest of Serengeti, western Serengeti, uh, north south, I mean uh, north south of Serengeti, and then north to Masai Mara. It goes every year like that. The change can be, the difference can be one or two weeks. It depends on how early or late the rain is. And these animals... Yeah? So... So, it, it always like that. And we have a lot of people coming here for filming. You have seen the river crossing and National Geographic? Yes, a few of those. That comes from Serengeti. I have been one of the guide of National Geographic in 2004. You, s you see like two seconds film, but it takes lots of energy to get the two minutes because they have to get a right angle, right light, right light for, for that shot. They need to get I was not laying in that small tent, but my people, the photographers, they were down in the river, laying in their bellies with the cameras, waiting for that snap of crocodile, like jumping up with the, with the wildebeest. Many can happen, so many can happen, but not in an angle that... Yeah? Not, in a, uh, not in an angle that is needed. 
So it, it's what you see, it's two seconds in a television from National Geographic. I'm telling you, it takes it takes hours. I did uh, uh, with the, uh, another this natural habitat in 2017, dropping season, giving birth. For two weeks, we tried to catch a giving birth mother, world Davis mother, and we missed it. Not because it's not happening, but it's not in the right angle. Or something interferes the, the shoot. When he's shooting that video, something interferes and that's trash. So you, if you get time in future, you need to come and see it. We have a lot of things. We have the caves, which used to be hiding caves during the colonial days along Tanga. We call the Amboni Caves. We have tribes that are here, like the Bushmans, or our fellow Africans, migrated from South Africa to this part of Africa. They are living here. They are still practicing their click language. So this, yeah. So you always see the lot of things in our country. Not only going to Serengeti, not only going to Gorongoro. You can go to see like what we're doing. You see like we're going to, you're in Arusha, we'll go to Dar es Salaam, we'll go to Zanzibar. We'll visit Arusha National Park today. The giraffe that you see here, I believe that's the same giraffe everywhere you go to. So anyway, it's good to see, not like only seeing it from the National Geographic. But seeing the people is also interesting.